everybody stand up, please. Quick. We need to get some energy in this room, right? Okay. All right, put your hands above your head. Okay, move to the right. Move to the left. Move to the back. And now let your hands just come over and fall down to the floor. Don't worry, just bend your knees a little bit so it's not tight and just let them drop, 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 drop. And then very slowly come up one vertebrae at a time, very slowly. Thinking about your body, which you haven't been thinking about for the last two hours, okay? Roll your shoulders back, right? Okay, and now go find someone that you don't know and introduce yourself, please. <laughs> okay, all right, so now what you've just experienced is Interfaith 101. <laughs> and I'm going to teach you one of my two main models. And you're going to learn it because it's very short and sweet. And it goes like this. Strangers are people we haven't yet met. All right, try it with me. Strangers, Strangers are people we haven't yet met. One more time without me. Strangers are people we haven't yet met. Bravo. Now, there's no one in here who's a stranger. And that is actually the basis of the work that I've been doing for almost 30 years. My particular fascination and my passion and my dedication is to working with people of all different backgrounds, faiths, beliefs, cultures, ethnicities, races, ages, genders, bringing them together and then masterminding brainstorming together and creating an event that will enhance the life of the community and of course of the world ultimately. And I believe that those small incremental changes that we make, of course starting with ourselves, and we've heard today from so many wonderful people who have been writing and promoting self-help, and of course we can't do much for the world if we're not helping ourselves first. But beyond that, what about instead of waiting till we've become the perfect person that we want to be? What if at the same time we're working together and we're figuring out how to solve the most pressing problems of our time, not as individual religions, not as individual cultures, not as individual pressure groups, right, or policy makers, but that we all have something invested together that when we do this in small groups, in one city at a time, in one community at a time, in one family at a time, what we get is much greater than the sum of all the parts. So, I want to tell you about something that happened to me about seven years ago that recently a young journalist came to interview me and he said, my favorite chapter is chapter 19 of your book. And I said, what's that one? He said, yes, it's called The Summer of My Spider Bite. So I was on my way to teach a peace building class in New York. And before I left, I went to my garden, which had at that time a huge grapevine that was so overgrown. I don't know how many of you have had experience with grapevines here. Okay, there's something special about grapevines. They're first, first of all, they're multi-directional. There are a lot of plants that will grow up or out or so forth, but grapevines, they grow in all directions at once, right? Do you know the expression, I heard it on the grapevine? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called that, because you start a rumor and you don't know where it'll go. Right? Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to be gone for a month, and I decided I had to cut some of it back to prune it, because when I got back home, I wouldn't be able to get in the garden, because it fastens itself around everything, around, tree, around other trees, around chairs, around anything that's in the way. If you stand there too long, it'll fasten itself around you. <clears throat> And the next morning, when I was leaving to go to the airport, I noticed I had a big bump right here in the middle of my third eye. Hmm. I didn't have time to deal with it, so I put some alcohol on it, and I took the plane to New York. And I discovered that it was actually a spider bite. 
and it got big and inflamed and red and I had to go to the hospital and I got some medication for it and I was told that I was lucky that it could, could have been fatal. We don't know what spider it was. But what happened after that was worth all the time I spent suffering and all the pain and the itching because what happened is that whomever I met, they saw something else. So I met one person, a Muslim, who said to me, are you Muslim? And I said, no, I'm Jewish. And they said, oh, I thought you had that bump from putting your head to the floor five times a day. <laughs> and then when it got really red and it was centered like that, I met someone on the, on the subway who said to me, are you Hindu? And I said, no. She said, oh, I thought you were wearing a bindi. You know the little red spots that the women put for decoration, right? And then I thought, well, there's this old uh, method I heard about treating these kind of things. I'll put some clay on it. And so I put clay on it. And I met another woman who said to me, oh my god, is it Ash Wednesday already? I'm a lapsed Catholic, she said. I didn't realize it was so soon. I said, no, it's, no, it's just... And then I, I finally went to teach my peace class. And uh, the students there said to me, there's someone living here on campus, and he is a Native American, and he's a shaman, and you need to go and see him. So they took me to see him, and he came up. And Definitely an arrowhead. <laughs> Do you realize that you received a shamanic initiation? Because it's in your third eye. And I said, yes, I do. I felt that it was something special. And he said, do you know what that means? That means you've been initiated, you have a special task. you know what that task is? I said, yes. And it has to do with everybody's reaction to my spider bite. <laughs> because if everybody saw himself and herself in me, that means that you are in me. That means that I am in you. And if that's true, how can we be having so much violence in the world? And what can one person do to make a difference? One person. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of physics. And the reason I do that is because we all think that physics and spirituality usually have nothing to do with each other. But I'm going to show you now, in the matter of moments, how one physical law is actually the basis of all spirituality. So, are you ready to play with me? Yes. Okay. Everybody raise your little finger. Okay. Now, do you know what just happened? In that one small, tiny movement from here to here, you caused all the molecules in the rest of the world to rearrange themselves to accommodate that little movement. Are there any scientists here? Whenever I ask that question, there are scientists, they always say, oh yes, that's true, that's true, that's true. It's the law of physics. Okay. It's the law of spirituality, too. It's the basic law of spirituality. And if that's true, that means that every small, profound act that you do in your life has the capacity to change the entire world. Let's just think about that for a second, okay? Every small, profound act that each of us does has the capacity to change the rest of the world. You never know when you're speaking if you're with 2,000 people or you're with four people, what's gonna be the, the effect of that, that encounter. So I was in Eugene, Oregon, giving a talk, there were six people there, and I said to myself, doesn't matter, right? And I asked everybody to meditate with me after I showed them the law of physics and spirituality. And then I asked them, during your meditation, I'd like you to think, what is the one small profound act that you commit to doing before you leave here today? It can be small but I guarantee you it will be profound. It can mean watering your neighbor's lawn, the neighbor that you haven't gotten along with for the last 20 years. He went out of town and you saw the lawn needed to be watered and you did that for him, right? It could be going to your dry cleaners who's Muslim 
who you've known for the last five years and you've never asked them how many children does he have and when is Ramadan coming? It could mean making up with someone dear to you in your life who you, you put that off for so many years and now you found out they're not well and you feel so embarrassed that you haven't done anything that you don't make that call. It could mean, it could mean, it could be just one small profound thing. So I, I gave my talk, we meditated, I asked them to think of something, and there was a young woman by the name of Emily. She was only 25 years old. And after it was over, I talked, I sold copies of my book, I autographed the copies, she, she bought one of them. And four months later, this is what she wrote me. I thought about what she said, I went to the local interfaith organization, I joined, I volunteered, to do a new program, and now we are serving breakfast, breakfast to 6,000 homeless people every month. So now each of you right now may be thinking about what is your one small profound act that you might do when you go home. Now I'm asking you to think about something that will make you a little bit uncomfortable if you do it. And I'm gonna ask you to promise to tell one other person in the room, maybe not this moment, but within the next few days, to call that person and say, what is that one small profound thing that you're willing to do to stretch yourself? I call this, I call this interfaith Pilates. <laughs> what makes it Pilates? Everybody who takes Pilates, what's the, what's the principle about Pilates? That you stretch from your core. core. Right, and when you stretch from your core, we know we get uncomfortable because if we haven't stretched and we're not uncomfortable, we haven't done our exercise, right? So I'm asking you now, this is your moment. I don't know, unless you want to call me at three in the morning, I'll accept your call. I'm asking you to make a commitment and to tell one other person here in the room what it is that you're willing to do when you leave here today. You have no idea what the ripple effects may be. So how many of you are willing to take, that, take on that commitment? when you leave here today. Please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. So I'm just about finished, but I want to share my second favorite motto. So my first one is strangers, strangers are people, people you haven't, haven't yet, yet met. met. Okay, and here's number two. Just a second, I have to go behind the quick change curtain. <laughs> Be interfaithful and multiply. <laughs> Beautiful. Yay. The new biblical proverb. 